Do you know that there is only one God in three eternal persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you know that Jesus said he is the only way to heaven, and his death and resurrection bring forgiveness of sins to all who believe? Welcome to the Pastor Study, a ministry of pastorstudy.org. Join us now as we study God's Word, the Bible, together. Welcome to the Pastor Study. Today our program is going to be entirely a question and answer program. Many of the questions have been sent in by you, our viewers. Pastor Brock, our first question, what is Advent? Why do some churches have it and some don't? The word Advent comes from the Latin Adventus, which means coming. So let me explain this. The four weeks before Christmas is the beginning of what's called the church year. And those four Sundays before Christmas are Advent Sundays. We're supposed to think about the second coming of Christ when he'll come down at the end of time and raise the dead and judge every human being. So it's kind of a somber time, a time to repent of sin, getting ready for the end of time. And we do that for four weeks so that when we come to Christmas to celebrate the first coming of Christ, we can do it with joy and a clear conscience. So it's a season of repentance. <clears throat> Jesus is born and that starts the Christmas Sundays of the Christmas of the calendar year for the church. Then comes the season of Epiphany, which means the appearance, manifestation. It's when Jesus appears for the first time to non-Jews. Do you know when that is? No. It's the wise men. Oh, the three wise men. Yeah, the wise men show up. <clears throat> and so after that, we get Lent. Lent is a word that means spring, and it's the six weeks before Easter when we meditate on the sufferings of Christ on the cross for our salvation. At the end of Lent comes Easter. We celebrate Christ's resurrection. Then we have the Resurrection Sundays, and then the giving of the Holy Spirit. Pentecost comes down on the disciples. They get speaking in tongues and go out and convert the world. That's called Pentecost Sunday, and that's the season of Pentecost. And then eventually we get back to Advent and we start all over. So this program is going to air about the beginning of Advent, four Sundays before Easter, uh, excuse me, Christmas. <laughs> all right. Oh yeah, and why do some churches, Catholic churches, <laughs> Lutheran churches, Episcopal churches, I'm not sure, but I think also the Methodist and Presbyterian churches would observe Advent. Probably the more non-denominational Baptist type churches probably don't. It just, it's a church tradition thing, so. Okay. Yeah. Was Jesus really born on December 25th? We don't know the day he was born. It could be, but it's about a one in 325 chance <laughs> mm -hmm. that that's the day he was born. Uh, nobody claims really that that's the day he was born, but it, it's chosen as the day we celebrate. Yeah. And it's always been that way, it seems like. Uh, it actually, the I believe the, the Orthodox churches celebrate a different day in January huh? for Christmas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wasn't there a pagan Roman holiday on December 25th? All right. I don't think it was. I think it was called Saturnalia, mm -hmm. and I think it was celebrated like the 21st <laughs> through the 23rd of December, and that's when the pagan Romans would, would worship Saturn, the god Saturn. Mm -hmm. And one thing the early church did is to help people get away from paganism, they would replace a pagan holiday with a Christian holiday. And so you, 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 that's, you know, it, it, it's a possibility that that's kind of what was going on. They were replacing okay. Saturnalia with Christmas. But I, I don't know that that's crystal clear, but that's a real possibility. And I don't think anything's wrong with that. Some people say, well, we shouldn't worship on a pagan holiday. I think anything we can do to get people away from the paganism of this world is okay with me. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Don't Christmas trees have a pagan origin? Let's talk about Christmas trees. I brought my <laughs> garage sale Christmas tree to the studio today and is it, yeah, people will say, but you know, didn't the pagans uh, use uh, a tree, a yule log and a tree to worship foreign deities and why do Christians have Christmas trees when they have pagan origins? Well, my response is um, just like December 25th. You can't worship, that's when they worship Saturn. Mm -hmm. Well, who says the devil owns December 25th? If the, if the ancient Romans want to worship Saturn around then, so what? I can worship God. And did, did the pagans in Europe 
before Christianity in the cold winters bring in evergreens to decorate their house during the uh, boring cold winters? Yeah, they did. Does that mean I can't have a tree because they, no. Mm -hmm. I mean, this does not mean paganism to me. It might have to the ancient uh, druids or something. <laughs> but uh, so I think it's fine to, actually, you know, the, the Puritans in early America, I think they wanted you to worship and go to church on Christmas, but they didn't like all this Christmas tree and all the all the stuff. They said no to all that because they were pretty strict. When I'm a German, when the Germans came over in the 1800s, they brought the Christmas tree tradition, and that's when people started having Christmas trees in America. Mm. Was when the Germans came. So, there's my garage sale Christmas tree. Next, <laughs> was Jesus born in 1 A.D.? In 525 A.D., a monk by the name of Dionysius Exicus came up with this, what we have as the, you know, uh, A.D., uh, B.C. He was off by about four years. He had Jesus being born on 1 A.D., meaning Anno Domini in Latin, one year of our Lord. So he thought the first year our Lord was born and was one years old was the first 1 A.D. The problem with that is King Herod died in 4 B.C. Well, King Herod, of course, is the guy mm -hmm. that tried to kill the babies of two years old and under. So we know that Jesus was born somewhere between 6 B.C. and 4 A.D. when Herod died. So it's he, he's off by about four years. So. Jesus was probably born not in 1 AD, but 6 to 4 BC. That's right in that area. Yeah. Does the Bible command us to celebrate Christmas? There's no verse that says you have to celebrate one day a year for Jesus' birth. Mm -hmm. And again, some, some religion, religious people say, well, you know, because the Bible, uh, Christmas isn't in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lent is in the Bible. And, and I say, okay, you don't have to have a day where you celebrate Christmas. You don't have to have a Lenten service. But there's all kinds of stuff that those churches use that aren't in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Light bulbs, um, hymns. Uh, True. Uh, well, hymns are kind of in the Bible in the book of, of, Prover of uh, Psalms. But just because something isn't in the Bible doesn't mean you can't use it. If it's unbiblical, you can't use it. But there's no pipe organs in the Bible. Does mm -hmm. that mean you can't have a pipe organ in your church? Mm. No. But Paul says the, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So there you go. Who were the three wise men? Well, um, you know the song, We Three Kings of Orient Are. There are three errors in that song. It never says there were three wise men. It says they brought three gifts, mm -hmm. so people assume there were three. Could have been 20 people bringing three gifts. So we don't know that there were three. We three kings, well, they weren't kings. They were wise men. They were kind of astrologers, and they were uh, people that had influence with kings. So they would have been the advisors, but they weren't kings. And so the third error, we three kings of Orient are. When we think of the Orient, we normally think of like China and stuff. They were hmm. f more like from Iraq, Iran, that area of Babylon. So they really quite weren't from the Orient. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a, the wise men were people who uh, who had influence with kings, but they weren't kings. They weren't kings. Yeah. Hmm. Was Mary 14 years old when she gave birth to Jesus? Yeah, it never says that. Now and then you'll you'll hear somebody dogmatically say, "Well, Mary was 14 years old, 13 years old when she was." It never says that. You know, I'll grant you in the ancient world they got married earlier than mm -hmm. we do. But when the Bible doesn't speak to something, you just should should not make some kind of dogmatic statement about it. So who knows how old she was. Yeah, she was young, but yeah. What is the big deal about Jesus being the son of David? Yeah, if you read the gospel accounts, it, it, they kind of go out of your way to show you the genealogy mm -hmm. of Mary and Joseph. And, and the reason... Jesus had to be from the line of David. David was the Old Testament king, uh, ruled about 1000 BC. 
God promised David, you're going to have a descendant who will be king forever and ever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Well, none of that came true for any of his children until Jesus was born. So Jesus is born to fulfill the promises that God made to David in 1000 BC. So that's very important. It's very important, yeah. Many have claimed to be the Messiah, like the Reverend Moon. Mm -hmm. How do we know Jesus is the real Messiah? The Reverend Moon was born in 1920 in Korea, and basically his, believer, his followers believed he, Reverend Moon is the second coming of Jesus Christ. Well, Jesus said, when I come back, I'm coming down in the clouds. I'm not, he, he's not going to be born on the earth again and mm -hmm. grow up in Korea. And, and now the Reverend Moon is dead, and he has not risen from the dead. So I don't know what the Moon people, they call the Moonies, the Unification Church, <laughs> I don't know what they're doing right now. If their numbers are going down, I haven't followed it. But um, the, So the question is, how do we know Jesus is the real Messiah mm -hmm. and not Reverend Moon, etc.? Mm -hmm. Because Jesus is the only one that fulfilled the Old Testament prophecies. You know, if you read the Old Testament, it's prophesying about this Redeemer, this Messiah who's going to come. And I encourage you, um, mm -hmm. uh, read um, Isaiah 53, read Psalm 22 that prophesy in detail the crucifixion of Christ that happened a thousand years later. So, yeah. Did Caesar Augustus know he was fulfilling prophecy by getting Joseph and Mary to be taxed in Bethlehem? Yeah. If you read Luke chapter 2, the reason Joseph and Mary go to Bethlehem is because they're of the house of David, like mm -hmm. we just talked about. Mm -hmm. So they had to go to David's town to be registered with the Romans to pay their taxes. And that was a decree given from Rome by Caesar Augustus. Did he know that he was fulfilling Micah chapter 5, verse 2, that the Messiah had to be born in Bethlehem. Did, did, uh, Caesar, Augustus, Caesar Augustus was a pagan Roman. He didn't know anything about the Christ coming. And so he just was making people pay their taxes. But God uses people, uses leaders who have no idea that he's using them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, he, and he used Caesar Augustus to get Joseph and Mary in Bethlehem in time for Mary to have the baby in Bethlehem to fulfill the prophecy. All in God's timing. That's right. Yeah. Whatever happened to Joseph, the father of Jesus? Yeah, you know, uh, the la you know the last time Joseph shows up in the New Testament? Mm -hmm. Jesus is 12 years old, and the they temple. lose him in the temple, mm -hmm. and, or in the, in the uh, processional uh, later after the temple. And they talk <laughs> about Joseph and Mary being very worried for their little 12-year-old boy, mm -hmm. Jesus, and then you never hear about him again. And then Jesus, when he's 30, starts his three-year ministry. Mm -hmm. We don't hear anything about Jesus from age 12 to 30. But when Jesus comes on the scene in age 30, you never hear about his father again. So the conjecture is sometime between Jesus' 12th year and 30th year, Joseph died. Mm -hmm. And yeah. he had other brothers and sisters, didn't he? Uh, let's talk about that. The Bible does talk about Jesus having brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. so I take that at face value. Roman Catholics uh, believe that Mary was ever virgin, mm -hmm. but if you read, I think it's, it's uh, if you read Matthew, Joseph, Joseph knew her not, had no sexual mm -hmm. relationships with, with Mary until Christ was born. And then it talks about brothers and sisters, so I think the normal way to read the New Testament is, after Jesus was born, Mary and Joseph had normal marital relations and had children. Roman Catholics would say, uh, it's not really brothers and sisters, it's cousins. It's his cousins they're referring to, mm -hmm. but it says brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. So anyway. Well, our next question was, why was Jesus born of a virgin? Yeah, um, why did God not use the sperm of Joseph to create? Well, it's be, it's be, it's be, well first of all, we want to say Jesus' body was created. But Jesus is God. Jesus is uncreated. Mm -hmm. He's eternal with the Father and the Spirit. So Jesus is eternally God, but he got his human body for the first time, and the only time, at Bethlehem. And so why was it necessary to skirt Joseph and directly have the Holy Spirit put the baby inside of Mary? I believe so that Jesus could avoid getting contaminated with what's called original sin. When, when Adam and Eve sinned, they passed their sin on to all their children. Mm -hmm. And so had he been born in the normal way, Jesus would have been a sinner inheriting original sin. Hmm. What is the immaculate conception? Yeah, people think that's what 
I just want to explain what's called the virgin birth. Yes. The Immaculate Conception is a Roman Catholic teaching that Mary was born sinless. And kind of their reasoning is, well, for her to produce a sinless Jesus Christ, she had to be sinless. Mm -hmm. But I remember when I was 12, my Lutheran pastor pointing out, well, if you follow that logic, then Mary's mother had to be sinless to produce a sinless Virgin Mary. And then, well, then Mary's mother's mother, and you go all the way back to Eve and it doesn't work. <laughs> so, Macca Conception is the Catholic teaching that Mary was born sinless and Mary never sinned. But in Luke, she calls God her savior, mm -hmm. and she needed a savior. And it never says in the Bible that Mary was perfect, it never says we should pray to her. I get concerned for people, they, they sell the hair, hell Mary so much, and, and would you pray to God? I don't think we're supposed to pray to anybody but God in the Bible. So that's, that's a concern. Okay. Mary's a wonderful woman, a, a wonderful role model. We should honor her as the mother of our Lord. That doesn't mean we proclaim her sinless or pray to her. Mm -hmm. Do all four Gospels tell the Christmas story? No. You only find the Christmas story in Matthew and Luke. Mark doesn't have it and John doesn't have it. That's why we need all four of the Gospels. We need to read all four of them to get the whole picture. Mm -hmm. Compare them. Mm -hmm. Any suggestions on how to keep Christ in Christmas? Uh, like for instance, you, get, you, go to the, you go online or you go to a Christian bookstore and you get a little uh, what Christmas means to me or the true meaning of Christmas. Wonderful little pamphlets. Takes you about three, four minutes to read them. And you just say, you know, before we have our Christmas meal or before we open our presents, let's just take a moment to talk about the real meaning of Christmas and you read it to your family. That's a quick and easy way to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just seems like today we're so engulfed with presents and yeah. and we really you, lose the meaning of yeah. so you Christ got, in Christmas. You got to, yeah, and I know it's out of people's comfort zone and it was for me too because I used to do it when I'd go home to Omaha. My mom is dead, but could we please... Can I read this little track before we open our presents? So that's mm -hmm. one way to do it. Well, those are my questions. You had a few letters from yes, viewers. Yes, you know, we've got, uh, there's one question, Mona, that, that I want us to hit, hit, which is, how would you respond to someone who says Christmas is a nice fairy tale? And I, I had a friend named Tracy, and her mother was an Episcopalian who said to her daughter, well, you know, and an Episcopalian believes in the Christmas story, but she didn't. And she said, you know, I don't believe in it. I do think it's in invention, but it's such a nice story. Hmm. Well, listen, if, if it's not true, it's not a nice story because right. it claims to be an, a, a true story. So um, I would say the reason I believe the, the Christmas story is not a fairy tale, it's not the kind of thing you would dream up. I mean, if I was going to make up a story that God becomes a man, he'd be born in a palace. Everybody would worship him. You wouldn't dream up he'd be born in a barn, laid down into where the cows slop their spit, you know, the manger. You wouldn't be dream that they'd kill him, you know. So it's so out of what we would come right. up with. And then the other reason I believe uh, Christianity is real and true, for 2,000 years, Jesus has been changing people's lives. And I want us to show something here. Mm -hmm. This is a little, I, would you watch this for just three minutes? Here's a story in Africa where Jesus is changing somebody's life. Please listen to this. The village of Obagaji in Nigeria is made up of peaceful and hardworking people. They are a people with strong beliefs, especially in traditional and ancestral worship. So when a boy named Aple fell ill, his parents did what most people in their village would have done. They went to a local witch doctor. The witch doctor said that Aple's sickness was caused by evil spirits. The only way to keep him alive was not to allow water to touch him ever again. If he baited, he will die. We listened to the witch doctor's instructions. I did not bathe for six years. My hair became matted. I had to drop out of school. I lost all of my friends as well as my mind after all those years of sitting in my own filth. When people saw me coming, 
they ran away because they were so afraid. When he thought things could not get any worse, tragedy struck. His village was attacked. Although Apple and his mother survived, they lost their loved ones, homes and livelihood. They escaped a little town where their lives would change forever. I began crying and screaming because my son had baited and he was going to die. But he didn't. Days turned into weeks and weeks turned into months and Apple was more alive and healthy than ever. Everyone's doubts and fears subsided. <laughs> I am so happy that God saved my child. I have decided to follow him and I no longer put my faith in any witch doctor. A play is excited to soon join TTI as a disciple maker and church planter. He and his mother have joined a local church and are committed to reaching their people for Christ as they share the miraculous work he has done in their lives. Jesus is the one true God. We can depend on him. He alone has the power to save. <laughs> So I, I thought that was a very moving video. Mm -hmm. And so why do I believe the Christmas story is not a fairy tale? Because for 2,000 years, mm -hmm. Jesus has been doing that kind of thing for people. He's real. Right, you had a few more questions there. I did. What happened, Pastor Brock, to the shepherds after the birth of Jesus Christ? We don't know. You know, it never says later they showed up at the cross and saw the crucifixion or uh, witnessed the resurrection. We have no idea what happened mm -hmm. to the shepherds. They, they hear about the birth, and that's about the end of our knowledge of them. What happened to the wise men? Well, they returned back home to Persia, um, but it, again, we don't know what happened. You know, did they ever learn that Christ died on the cross and rose from the dead? We don't know. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Some of this stuff, you just have to let it be mystery and just say, we don't know. What about the term magi? What does that mean? Magi, uh, again, was a cast of wise people that would uh, inform and instruct like kings. They were into astrology, which we're not supposed to get into as Christians, because it's, 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 it's forbidden. For you and I should not be reading our horoscopes. We're led by the word of God, not by the stars or astrology. But they were messed up, they were into astrology, but God is merciful and leads people even who are messed up. Mm -hmm. That's one of the lessons from the, the Magi. Magi and wise men are the same people. Are the same. Yeah. What does the term Christmas mean? All right, it's Christ's Mass. You know, Catholics go to Mass. Mm -hmm. Well, where do, you, where do they get the word Mass? What does the word Mass come from? The, and we're not sure about this, but the last words uh, uh, when they had worship services many years ago was, you are dismissed. And the word miss became the Mass. So the Christ Mass mm. is the service that we hold celebrating Christ's birth. Christ Mass is Christ Mass when people go to church to worship the, the uh, newborn king. I did not know that. Yeah. What is meant by being born again? Do all religions practice this? 
Yeah, this lady was a Catholic, and she said, my Baptist friends say you have to be born again to go to heaven. And so I, I responded to her, you know, you didn't hear all that much about born-again Christians until the 1980s when Jimmy Carter became president and he was a born-again Christian. Um, and then you heard a lot about it. You don't hear about it that much anymore. Mm -hmm. And there are three places, and only three, that talk about being born again in the New Testament. Number one is John chapter 3, where Jesus says to Nicodemus, you must be born again of the water and the spirit. I think that's a reference to baptism. Mm -hmm. One way we are born again is through baptism. And then the second way you get born again is uh, 1 Peter chapter 1. He, it says, um, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his mercy you have been, he has caused us to a living hope through the resurrection to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Somehow when Jesus rose from the dead, we all were born again. So it's through baptism, through the resurrection of Christ from the dead. And in the same chapter, 1 Peter chapter 1, it says, um, you have been born again, not of seed, which is perishable, but imperishable. That is through the living and abiding word of God. So through God's word, we get born again. Mm -hmm. Through baptism, we get born again. And through the resurrection of Christ, we get born again. And so I responded to her, you know, if you believe in the resurrection of Christ, you, you know you're a sinner, uh, you, you, you've you been baptized, and you know his resurrection and death are your hope, you've been born again. Whether you can tell me the date or not is immaterial. Mm -hmm. You've been born again if you're truly trusting Christ for your salvation. Do you have to be baptized in order to go to heaven? Well... I'm thinking of babies that died very yeah, early or, or, the or the thief there, on the cross. There's the cross. exceptions, but overwhelmingly, when people got saved, they got water baptized mm -hmm. in the New Testament. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be without it. But can God work outside the box like He did with the thief on the mm -hmm. cross? We know the thief on the cross went to heaven, and he was never baptized. So, I, but I wouldn't use that as a reason not to get baptized. We're commanded to be baptized. Mm -hmm. And God does wonderful things in baptism. So you don't want to miss it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, listen, we've got one minute left. And just, I, I want to tell people what's coming. Uh, for the next four weeks, we're going to talk about lessons from the angels at Christmas, then lessons from the wise men at Christmas, then lessons from the shepherd at Christmas, and our last show around Christmas time will be, uh, what child is this? Who exactly is Jesus? And we'll we'll learn all that. So that's the next four weeks. And now as we enter Advent, uh, this is the time we think about the second coming mm -hmm. Advent of Christ. He comes down in the clouds, raises the dead, judges the world. It's gonna be an awesome day. So these four weeks, we are to be repenting of our sins, turning our thoughts to Christ, rededicating our lives to Christ. That's what the Advent season has meant for hundreds and hundreds of years for the church. So there you go. If you'd like to watch our show anytime for free, you go to pastorstudy.org and uh, all of our TV shows are there. Have a great Advent. We'll see you soon. God bless. Thank you for watching The Pastor Study. You can watch more of our programs at pastorstudy.org. We are on the air preaching the good news of Jesus Christ because of the generous support of you, our viewers. Would you consider supporting our ministry? You may do so at pastorstudy.org or write the Pastor Study, P.O. Box 41294, Minneapolis, Minnesota 55441. May the blessing of our one triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever.